Katrina Talk is a weekly podcast that will inspire and empower women of all ages to strive for the impossible. I am your host, Trina L. Martin, motivational speaker, leader, and cybertech expert. Every week, I will share wisdom gained from life experiences and my lessons learned while pursuing my goals to inspire you to achieve the next level in your life. Hey, welcome to Trina Talk. This is episode number two, and I am your host, Trina L. Martin from TrinaMartin.com. I am podcasting on the road from Dallas, Texas. I am here attending the Woman Thou Art Loose Masterclass. I'm telling you, this has been an amazing week. (laughs) I have been motivated and inspired to just do some things in my life that I'm just... I'm just ready to get back home and to start doing what I need to do to get to the next level. I got here on Wednesday, and Wednesday evening I attended the God's Leading Lady Gala, and I had never attended it before, so I reserved my seat, bought my ticket, and it was just something that I've never experienced. Just to get dressed up, to be in a group of women who committed their lives to excellent and going to the next level. These women, they enrolled in this class to empower themselves. And it's several weeks of a stringent pro- uh, process of mentoring and learning. And then these women are rewarded with a graduation of sorts to show everyone that Basically, they're coming out and they're going to the next level in their life. And it was amazing. So Wednesday night, I attended the God's Leading Lady Gala. And it was, I didn't know what I was in store for. I knew that there would be a social event and seeing these women um, graduate and be there with their families and friends. But I really didn't know what to expect. So it was a great experience for me. On the serious side, um, away from the the party, if you will, Trayvon Martin's mother was there, and she presented Dothan John's mother, and Dothan John is the man who a couple months ago was killed in his own apartment here in Dallas by a Dallas female police officer. Trayvon Martin's mother presented the Grace Award to Dothan John's mom, and forgive me, her name ex- um, escapes me right now, but basically for how she's been handling her tragedy with dignity in the media, and not that she wanted an award or is that something that you award people for, but when you're experiencing that kind of tragedy and for you to keep your head up and just keep pushing and and not letting it, just totally tear you down. There's something to be said for that. She she just and her her few moments that she spoke were very powerful. She was grieving, of course, and she just she let it be known that she will continue to fight for her son's justice. It was very somber, especially for me being a mother of a son and in today's um, climate of the United States. So this was my second year attending the Woman Thou Art Loose conference. Last year I attended MegaFest, which had Woman Thou Art Loose intertwined in it along with Manpower. This year they did something different, which was to have the Woman Thou Art Loose masterclass, which was nothing but for women, and they had women, powerful speakers. I mean, Nellie Galan was there who spoke, and she just set me on fire. She's the Latina woman who helped get Telemundo started. She has produced over 700 shows. There was Tiffany, the budgetista, who was talking about finances. Cynthia Miller, who is the CEO now of the Dallas Mavericks, she was here, just an amazing lineup of women, women that you would have ended up paying 
a lot of money to go see. They were here just imparting their wisdom to us as women on how to be successful in our lives and go to the next level, whether it's our entrepreneurship, our faith, our personal life, just amazing things, things that inspire me to inspire you. And this conference, I, and I, like I said, I started going to this conference last year was my first time. This conference is how I recharge myself. It's something that I do for me. It's only for me. It recharges my, it recharges me and it renews my faith. And you have to have something that is for you and you only, something that recharges you and, and gets you into the place that you need to be in your right frame of mind, whatever that may be. It Maybe it's not going to a conference for you. Maybe it's taking yourself out to dinner or sitting at home while everyone is gone and just sitting back and reflecting or reading a book. Whatever that is for you, I highly suggest you do it. But if you ever get a chance, women, and they were there were some men here with their wives and some men who just attended and that was totally acceptable no one was turned away of course if you pay um, the f- registration fee they're not going to turn you away but there were several men here but women if you ever get a chance to attend the woman of our art loose conference you will be inspired empowered and uplifted so check into that if, if you know sometime in your life try to go what I love about the woman that are loose conference is that women come from all over the world. I mean, it's not just a U.S. thing. It's not just a Texas thing. They come from all over the world. And I met a lot of amazing women of all colors from all walks, walks of life and who lived everywhere. And it's a great networking event. But what I took most from the event is just people sharing their stories with each other. I had a couple of amazing women that we confided in each other and shared our stories, and it's just amazing the things that people have been through and the things that they're inspired and motivated to do. It's just it's awesome. I'm, I, I get so stoked every time it's you know I register and it, it, the time approaches for me to attend. It's just one of those things that I really enjoy doing. So while at the social, uh, before the God's Leading Lady Gala, I ended up speaking to a husband of one of the women graduates. He said that the program has made his wife face her fears and step out to do the things that she had never done before. He said she zipped line and he was just floored. He could not believe that she actually went and did something that he had been trying to get her to do for years. So that's that's the kind of program this is, the the God's Leading Lady and the Women That Aren't Loose. It's, it's empowering. But I said that to say this. That brings me to this week's topic. And this week's topic is, is fear stopping you from pursuing your passion? What are your fears? Think about that. We all have them. Sometimes we don't like to admit it, but we all have fears. Is your fear shame, guilt, failure? Are you afraid to love? That one kind of hits home for me. Are you afraid to change, being vulnerable? Are you afraid of leaving a job or a relationship? Are you afraid of starting a new job or starting that business? Are you afraid of getting out and moving to another city, state, maybe even moving to another country? Are you afraid of traveling alone, eating alone? I know there's a lot of women out there who won't go to the movies by themselves, won't go to dinner by themselves. Are you afraid of what other people think about you? That used to be a fear of mine. Now, I don't really care. I'm almost 50 years old. I'm 47, so... Really what people think about me doesn't matter to me because I know that they're not paying my mortgage or any of my bills. They don't take care of my children and they're not my God. So I really don't care what other people think. But you get it. 
there are fears and we all have them. And I want you to think about what is your fear that is stopping you from pursuing your passion? What is it that you are so afraid of that you won't step out? So while I was preparing for this episode, I decided to look up the definition of exactly what fear is. And this is what I got from Webster. Fear is an anxious concern. To be afraid. Simple enough. We all know what fear is. Now, as I was thinking about this and and reflecting over my life, and fear is a God-given emotion. So fear is not something that people are like, oh, you know what, you're crazy. Fear doesn't exist. Yeah, fear does exist. And it is a God-given emotion because some things you do need to be afraid of. And that's why we all have the fight or flight response. But fear should not consume you. Fear should not keep you from living your life. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So fear can be a bad thing or can be a good thing. The bad thing is fear stagnating you. If fear prevents you from achieving your dreams and going to the next level, that's a bad thing. Now, on the flip side of that, fear can be a good thing. Fear can stretch you. It can fuel you. It can make you persevere. And honestly, for me, most of my life, my fear has made me stretch out. It has driven me because I'm just that type A type of person. So fear has kind of fueled me for several things in my life. But then there's also been times that fear caused me to stagnate or not do the things that I was passionate about, like this podcast and my motivational speaking. This is something that I had on my heart for probably about 15 years now, and I'm just now doing it because I had to get past my fear. So what I want to say to you is don't let fear stop you from pursuing your passions and your dreams. Let it fuel you. Let it make you persevere. And if you're striving, if striving for your dreams doesn't cause you to have fear on some level, then your dream is too small. Okay, so think about that. So pursuing your passion and thinking about your dream, yes, we all get scared. We all have fear. But if you're not afraid, then it's too small. It means that it's something that you can do easily If you're not afraid. So fear is a good thing. Fear causes us to stay in our comfort zone. And again, that goes back to pursuing your dreams. Okay? So if if you're in your comfort zone and you're too afraid to step out, that's not a good thing because you have to take risks. We have to take risks. And I'm not talking about uninformed risk and just being crazy and doing things that you haven't researched, but being strategic is what I would call it, being strategic about your risk. And here's something that you can do. Ask yourself, what is on the other side of fear? What's, what is on the other side of fear? And you know what the answer is? Nothing. There is nothing on the other side of fear. Because if you don't go for what you're afraid of, you'll never know what could have been. Okay? So there's nothing on the other side of fear. It, it, it won't make you spontaneously combust it's just, it's stopping you, you know. What, what, what will happen when you step outside your comfort zone? What will happen if you don't? My thing is, if you don't, you'll never know, 
Okay. So think about that. What's on the other side of your head? What is it that you're really wanting to do that you have a passion for? What is your dream? And what have you had on your heart that you really wanted to do, but you said, you know what, I'm afraid and I'm not going to do it? What's, what's the worst that could happen to you if you do it? And fear comes with us thinking about stepping outside our comfort zone. And you have to get out of your comfort zone. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable. You have to be willing to fail. Okay? So getting out of your comfort zone is not going to be easy. Yes, it's going to be uncomfortable. And yes, you may fail. But then again, you may succeed. But if you don't try, you'll never know. So thinking about this, I have two short stories I'm going to tell you about times where I was so afraid, but I had to get out and get past my fear. Okay? So my first one was, okay, I already shared with you that I'm a naval officer. I was deployed and I ended up spending two years in Cuba. And I can swim. I'm no Michael Phelps, but I can swim and keep myself from drowning, I hope. But I was used to swimming in a pool. So in Cuba, on free time, you can dive and you can learn how to be a certified diver. Well, my good friend, who is also a naval officer, she was like, let's get certified to become divers. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like, I can barely, you know, get in this pool. Getting out in open water was something that just scared me because, you know, in a pool, there's boundaries, right? There's limits. You can only go so deep. You can only go so wide. You know, you get tired. You can hit over to the edge or, you know, hurry up and swim to the other end and you can get out. Well, when you're on, in the ocean in open water, it's endless. So that was a big fear of mine. So to make a long story short, my friend persuaded me to become a certified diver. And I was very scared. And as we were going through the training and we trained in the pool and we had to put on all our gear and do all these different things, at one point when we had to do a certain thing, I was like, nope, I'm not doing this. Uh uh-uh. And I really commend the instructor because she was like, yes, you can do this. You're going to do it. Don't panic. Do it. Anyway, I ended up getting certified. But then again, I went to the next level with my friend, and then I ended up getting advanced certified. So I am an advanced PADI certified diver, which for those of you who dive know what that means, which means I can dive to limits like 100 feet, 150 feet below sea level, below water, below sea level, whatever that is. But I'm an advanced certified diver, and that's something that, one, I was afraid to do and probably never would have done until my friend persuaded me to do it. And I said, you know what? This is going to be a way for me to kick my fear of swimming out in the open water. So I did that. My next fear came with relocating to a new city seven years ago. I live here in Houston and... My job relocated me to Houston. And at the time, it was a new job that I decided to take. Well, I was excited to get the new job and move to Houston. But then when I started thinking about, okay, I'm leaving a place where I had lived for 10, 12 years. I had a home there. I had a good job that I had been there for a long time. And when I started thinking about all these things and I was thinking about, oh, my children are small. I'm going to get ready to move them across country and other things were going on in my life at the time. I got scared. And I actually, I had like a breakdown, a meltdown, a panic attack one day, just thinking about everything. And I was thinking about not accepting the new job and staying in my comfort zone. Well, I did accept the new job. I ended up moving to Houston, and here I am. 
I face my fears. Things are not bad. The world didn't crumble. So what's on the other side of fear for you? What will happen if you face your fears? What will happen if you don't? And how I look at fear, and I've kind of done this all my life, is I personally tell myself I don't want any regrets in my life. I don't want to be an old woman one day and I look back and I have regrets. I mean, even my mistakes and failures, I've learned to accept them because they all work together for the good of me. And they may not have been good. They may have been mistakes. I may have had some hard times, some trauma, some crying days, but I've learned to accept them. And so with fear, I just told myself, I don't want to have any regrets. I don't want to look back one day over my life and feel that I should have, I could have, and I would have done something if. I don't want to live with the what ifs. So a lot of times when I'm thinking about that fear and how to get past it, that's kind of what I personally do. I kind of think about, well, Is this going to be something that one day I'm going to look back and say, hmm, what if? What if I had done this? How would it turn out? So what should you do to get past your fears? Well, first, I think you should educate yourself on the situation that's causing you fear so that you can decide how to handle it, whatever that may be. And then... Have a support system. Surround yourself with people who are positive, people who are for you, people who are in your corner, people who can uplift you. And that's what you want. You don't want someone who is when you're saying, okay, I have this passion and I really want to pursue it, but I'm afraid. And then that person is saying, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you shouldn't do that. That's crazy. That You want someone who's going to say, you know what? You should go for it. I encourage you. I support you. Build a support system. And that's not just for fear. That's for anything. You need to have some friends, good friends, trustworthy friends, and some family, trustworthy family that you can talk to, that you can depend on. And when you find that person, Confide in that person about your fears. You should have someone who gives to you just like you give to them. If you're the person who's always encouraging your friends, then you need a new group of friends. So you should have friends and family that you can go to when you're afraid and when you want to pursue your dreams who are going to listen and say, Yes, you should do that. Now, again, those same friends should be friends enough to tell you that if something is really crazy, because sometimes our fears are not fears just for the sake of fear. Sometimes fear is something that's totally outrageous, and maybe you should really think really long and hard for doing it. So if you're, you know, if your thing is, well, you know what, I'm afraid because I met this person on Facebook and they want me to send them $100,000. I'm afraid, but I don't think I'm going to step out on my fear. No, your good friend should tell you, no, you're afraid for a reason because that's crazy, okay? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about fears that are stopping you from pursuing your passion, things that are going to take you to the next level in your life. So you need to find that person who you can confide in, okay? Okay. Once you find someone who you can find in, confide in and you educate yourself about what's causing you fear, you decide how you want to handle it, and I'm talking about in respect to pursuing your passions and your dreams, then stop making excuses. Make a decision to commit to take the actions to overcome that fear. Stop making excuses and... And we all know that when 
especially when it's our dream, something that we know we really want to do, and then you, you kind of talk yourself out of it. You say, well, who am I? Um, I'm not famous, or I'm not successful, or who will listen to me? So we have those type of fears. So we kind of talk ourselves out of doing things that will propel us and take us to the next, next level. So stop making excuses, okay? Just stop. Really think about it. Get yourself together because you have, the, you have the ability to do it. Don't let fear stop you. You know, fear, fear is a powerful thing. And fear, if fear just stops people on so many levels. I mean, I'm here in Dallas. Fort Worth is 20 minutes away. And there are people who live in Dallas who have never been to Fort Worth. There are people who live in Fort Worth who have never been to Dallas. That's crazy. You are 20 minutes away from the connecting city. And you have never been outside your comfort zone, your little bubble. Why? Because you're afraid of experiencing something new. So don't let fear stop you. I mean, you have the ability to do it, whatever that is. Um, Traveling alone. I love traveling alone. I have been around the world by myself. And people ask me, they're like, wow, how do you how do you get out and do these things? Well, my thing is, if I don't do them, who am I? Who am I? You know, who am I affecting? I'm affecting myself. So I don't have a problem traveling by myself. Would I prefer to have a traveling companion? Yes, I would. But many times I don't. So I'm not going to lock myself up in my home and never travel. And once I get to the place I'm going, I'm going to get out and I'm going to do the things I want to do. Be it sightseeing, going out to eat, getting a movie, going to a museum, whatever that may be. I don't have a problem with going out to dinner by myself. At least, you know, once a month I try to get out and take myself to dinner. That's another way that I recharge and give myself some me time. So stop, stop letting fear stagnate you and stop you from going to what you are dreaming and what you want to pursue. When you do your research and you know that, hey, this is my passion, this is my dream, and these are the things that I need to do to accomplish that, set out, make a plan, decide, and take baby steps. Decide what things you need to do one at a time that you can achieve and overcome to get you to the next step. And then finally, before you know it, you would have overcame that fear. So like my example of the diving, it was, okay, let me research this. You know, it was my friend laying on me. Okay, let's do this. This is, you know, we can, we can, you know, once you learn how to dive and get certified, you can, you can do this, you can dive, you know, you'll be certified for the rest of your life. You can go on vacation. You can go take all these, go to the Turks and Caicos and dive. You know, you'll conquer your fear of being out in open water. So I start listening to her. I start talking to other divers. I started reading some things. Just, and diving opened up a whole new world to me. I mean, being underwater and seeing things that are in the ocean, it's amazing and it's an experience and it's a calm that I would have never known if I didn't learn how to dive, if I didn't get certified to dive. And being an advanced diver, now I know if I ever want to take a trip to an island somewhere, that's one of the things that I can do as an activity. So... I guess what I'm saying is you got to think about, you know, what you want to do, what do you have to gain, whether it be that, okay, I'm just overcoming a fear so that I want to be afraid of this anymore, like the zip lining for the woman, or if it's your passion 
and you're just afraid to do it because, like we all are, we're afraid because we think we don't have enough. So we say, you know what, eh, I'm not going to do that because I, I don't think anyone will come. I don't think anyone will listen to me. I don't think I will be successful. Well, you can be success- successful if you set your mind to it. You set your mind to it. Take one baby step at a time. Say, okay, I need to do A in a series of five steps to overcome my fear. Well, do A first. Get over A to get successful and move on to the next step. And then the next step. And then pretty soon, you know, you would have achieved your goal. One of the things, like I was saying, that I love about the Woman Thou Art Loose conference is that you meet women from all over. So I was sitting next to this woman, and she was telling me about how she had been ill and she had a traumatic brain injury because of a blood clot. But she's here, so she's still alive, and she was just telling me about the things that happened in her life as a result. And some were good, some were bad, but the bottom line was this traumatic event took her to another place that actually she really wanted to be, but she was afraid to do it. And because of being ill, it kind of forced her to this place. Well, her dream is to write a book. And she was saying, I'm afraid. And I thought about, hmm, okay, (laughs) I'm, I'm preparing for my podcast on fear. What are you afraid of? And she was saying, you know what, I am an analytical person. I, I'm, I, you know, I have to have everything in line. I got to research and I got to make sure, you know, A, B, C is all lined up before I decide to do something. And I related with that because I'm the same way. I am a type A alpha female to the end. I'm analytical. I'm very strategic. I don't make any decisions uninformed or unwisely. So I knew what she was talking about. But she wants to write this book, and she's like, well, you know, I, I don't know if I'm going to get a publish. I don't know. Da, 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 da. And I had to tell her, I said, you have to let that go. You have to let that go. Just start. Just start writing your book. Start telling your story. Don't worry about publishing and all this, that, and the other that comes later on down the line. Right now, only thing you need to do is write the book. When you get ready for that next step, it'll come along and things will happen and fall in place for you to get to that next step. And she said, you know what? She said, my sister's been telling me that same thing. And I said, see? And I laughed because I told her, I said, you know, I'm telling you this, but I have to tell myself that as well because I was feeling the same way about my speaking and doing this podcast until finally I said, you know what? I'm just going to do it. So... You have to do it. Just take the first step. Fear can either motivate you or demotivate you. And you decide. You decide what you're going to allow fear to do in your life. Will you let fear define your life? I hope not. But take the first step. So, If I can give you anything, this is Trina's takeaway for the week. Don't let fear fool you into complacency. Let it stretch you. Think about that. Let fear stretch you. And I'm going to leave you with this. One of my favorite quotes, and it goes like this. I never lose. I either win or learn. And that quote was by the great Nelson Mandela. And of all people, if Nelson Mandela looked at life like that, why can't we? So that's it for this week's episode. I'm glad you tuned in to listen. And again, this was Trina Talk. I'm your host, Trina L. Martin. 
Have a blessed week. And I hope that you listen next week. Take care. I have a correction to what I said earlier in the podcast. The CEO of the Dallas Mavericks name is Mrs. Cynthia Marshall. I believe I said Miller, but her name is Cynthia Marshall. So my apologies. You can listen to Trina Talk anytime and anywhere. It's available on iTunes, Google Play Music, Stitcher, and Spotify. If you like the podcast, please don't forget to go to iTunes to subscribe, rate, review, and share. If you have questions for me or need inspiration on how to go to the next level, tweet me directly at Trina L. Martin. I hope you have a great week. Until then, remember, if you change your mindset, you'll change your life. Keep striving. Success is a journey, not a destination.